Hi, I'm going to quickly demonstrate creating a panoramic image and preparing it for upload to the Trek Photography sites using the software Adobe Photoshop Element 6. In order to initiate the large posting option on the Trek sites, we first need to upload an image with a ratio of 2.5 to 1 or greater. With the maximum image length of 800 pixels, this will give our image a height of 320 pixels or less. An image with a height greater than 320 pixels will upload but it will not initiate the large posting option. A minimum height requirement is 250 pixels. With the maximum length of 800 pixels and the minimum height of 250 pixels, we arrive at a ratio of 3.2 to 1. The 3.2 to 1 ratio describes a shorter and wider image and I find is more favorable for a panoramic image. So I'm going to use that for my demonstration. First off I need to create my panoramic image. I'll select File, New, Photo Merge Panorama. I have my images set aside in a folder so I'll browse for that, open it, Select the reposition only as my preferred panorama method. A couple of problems I encounter with Adobe Photoshop Element 6 is when creating a panoramic image, many times my cropping tool will lock up and I either have to close the program or find another way to unlock the tool. On occasion I've also had it place images in the wrong position. It's a good idea, once the image is created, to check the layer palette box to ensure the images have been placed correctly. It's very easy to tell scanning quickly over the layers that the image is created correctly. Next, I will flatten the image to simplify it. There's many layers, and by flattening it, I can turn it into one simple layer. As I mentioned, my cropping tool did lock up, and I'll have to unlock it. I've discovered that if I add a bit of canvas to the image, that it will unlock the tool. So I select Image, Image Size, Canvas Size, I'll add around 5% to both the width and height. I find that not only does it unlock the tool, but it makes cropping a little bit easier. Um, the cropping tool likes to grab onto the en edges of the image, and that can be a little bit inconvenient. With the cropping tool unlocked, I'll set it to no restriction and refer to my image ratio. The 3.2 measurement is not particularly practical to enter into a cropping tool, so I like to multiply it by 10 to come to a 32 by 10 measurement. I'll enter 32 into the width category of the cropping tool. I'll leave the height field blank and the resolution field blank as well. By entering a width only measurement of 32, I leave my cropping tool free to crop to any ratio that is suitable for my image. At the same time, by entering a measurement, when I crop the image, the 32 centimeter or inch measurement is embedded into the file's printing information, and that's going to come in handy. Looking at the image, I can tell that it's short and its width is too great to fit into the 3.2 to 1 ratio. And when resized to 800 pixels along the length of the image, my height is going to drop below 250 pixels. So I'll adapt the image by adding canvas. By selecting image, resize, canvas size, I can change my canvas for the image. On my canvas size dialog, 
in the width category, it lists the 32 centimeter measurement which I had entered into the cropping tool. This is the reason that we enter that measurement into the cropping tool. The height is listed as being 6.38. This is not suitable for our image ratio and I will change that height to 10. Whether the cropping tool is set in inches or centimeters or miles for that matter, it really makes no difference. Um, these numbers are really only relevant to printing and as long as the image stays in a digital place, the unit measurements don't matter much. I will check that my anchor is centered, which it is by default. Set a color for my canvas. Apply the canvas and black bars will be placed on the bottom and the top of the image. And my image ratio has also been changed as a result. At the bottom of the image window, it lists printing information. It says the image is 32 centimeters by 10 centimeters and then gives a PPI printing quality. The image is now ready to resize for upload to the track site. I'll choose image, resize, image size. I'll enter 3000 as my length. We have a 4000 maximum, but I find that 3000 is going to save better with a higher quality level. So I like to use 3000 pixels. On the resample image box, I will change that to bicubic sharper, being the superior resizing filter for downsizing, and apply the resize. I'll save the image as my large post. I'll need to drop the quality level quite low. to fall within the 400 kilobyte range. With a quality setting of 3, which is very low, I achieve a 389 kilobyte range. This is the reason why I use 3000 pixels. With a 4000 pixel image, I would have to drop the quality setting to 2, maybe even 1 to hit the right requirements for our file size. I'll now resize the image for the small post, setting a width of 800 pixels. I'll make sure that the height stays at 250, which is our minimum requirement. Again, set my resample filter to buy cubic sharper. After resizing, it's usually a good idea to sharpen an image, but I'm just skipping that step to save a little bit of time. And I'll save the image as my small post. The small post quality file will be a lot higher. It's a very small image and saves very easily within the 300 kilobyte range. So I'll just turn that rate up to 12. Um, normally when I create a panoramic image using Photoshop Elements, I'll build the panorama, crop it, add my canvas to adapt my to adapt my um, image ratio and then I'll save the file and use a secondary program for resizing and saving. I find the options for saving and resizing are a little limited in Photoshop Elements and well there's some free softwares that are a little more versatile in that area. But this demonstration was using Photoshop, so I just stuck to that for the whole process. And that is the process of creating a panoramic image and preparing it to upload to the Trek Photography sites.